I love being able to see who's in the waiting room. Let me see. Get me up. Hey guys, sorry I'm running late here. Computer issues. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yep. Is Carl again? No, oh, Carl's in somewhere. I'm here. plans for us. Sure, I can I can take you through that. Nice to see you all again. Um, so we met a few months back um, with some other renovations at Sawtell. So those are well underway. While doing um, the renovations around the front of the house, they did find that the front door was more damaged than they that than they originally thought. So um, it became clear that we would need um, excuse me, I don't know if that's me. Um, oh, you're doing that, um, that we would need to replace that door and um, also add an additional storm door that I think was originally part of the project, but um, that was originally on the house, but has not been for many years. So we'd like to add that um, mahogany storm door in as well. That, and that would be a wooden storm door? It would, yes, mahogany, and as, as would the door itself. So the door in the in the um, the door would be a mahogany. Does any any of the commission members have any questions or comments? Go, Virginia. I would urge the applicants to retain the original door that is on the building now, not knowing exactly how old it is. But I know the previous owners had done quite a bit of restoration work on it but it's always advisable to take anything that is old and keep a, keep a sample of it so that in the future, other people can replicate that um, and have some integrity in its replication. Thank you. Great. We will be using the hardware as well. That is the plan is to use the original hardware from the door and put that on the new door. Great. Jonathan? Yeah, hi. Uh, I don't believe there were any um, sketches or plans for what the door looked like, either the fur or the mahogany. Um, do you have, uh, and, and I don't think it was there were any pictures at all. I tried to look at the, the stuff again today, but I didn't see anything. Do you have any description or plans for what either the door or the uh, screen door looks like? Would we be able to see that? I don't. Um, I, I I don't. Um, I can certainly go back to them. Um, I know that they are purchasing. You know, the, the plan was to purchase a new door. I don't know what the look of that would mm -hmm. be. Um, Presto has been very good in maintaining the look and in, in duplicating what's there. But I can certainly go back to them and ask them what to um, send over some samples. Yes, I would. I would appreciate that. I don't know about how how other folks feel, but uh, we're basically sort of. Uh, and, and I have no um, 
no desire to, to prolong or delay this, but I do have a, an interest in at least knowing what the design looks like, how it's going to integrate. That's a uh, not completely ornate entrance, but it's a fairly, uh, it's a fairly beautiful, it's a very beautiful entrance. Uh, it has the side lights, if I remember on the side, the nice entablature on the top. It's, it's very nice. And so, um, and I obviously we know what the current door looks like. So uh, generally speaking, I think in the, in the, we, we haven't had that many instances with um, these kinds of approval uh, for maintenance or repair on these properties that have these deed restrictions. But I would presume uh, that they would at least include some degree of review of the design and the plan for what's being proposed. So I don't know how to go forward with that. I, <clears throat> I don't know what your plans uh, timetable was, Linda. I'm not necessarily looking to uh, to slow that down, but if, if it were possible for us to get that before we could finalize the approval, I, I would like to do that. But again, I'm not necessarily looking to delay this. So what is your time frame? Because because the existing door on the inside is so um, warped at the bottom, we, we are worried about um, some kind of further <clears throat> weather damage. So we are looking to do it as soon as possible. Um, but it's it certainly, you know, it's a reasonable request if I, if if I, I can send it over that the side lights um, in the top of it have already been replaced part of the original approval that we received. Okay. So that's all been um, replaced in cedar. <laughs> so this is just the actual door. <clears throat> um, but I can certainly ask them to send over, um, you know, something. Um, perhaps we could vote on the door tonight and then ask for a, a, some uh, sketch of the storm door since we don't have so we know what the door now looks like and then you're going to replicate that but maybe so we don't have a, an existing storm door to see would that be helpful so that you could at least get the, the main the, the main door ordered virginia well it looks like um they're ordering it and it's not being uh handmade or anything so it's off to somebody's lot but it's important to me that it shows the um, configuration of the um, panels and the, I think there's top lights on that door as well. I'm not sure. So I think it's important that we see the, um, the, the drawing of it. Gotcha. John? Yes, I, I, I would agree, and I'm, I'm sorry, I, I wish I had thought of this. I only thought of it today, and I wish I had thought of it uh, earlier on when we saw your plans, and perhaps we could have gotten that ahead of time. But uh, to, to Virginia's point, I'm not even aware that there was any, or, or I guess to Sam's point, I'm not sure there was any indication that the replacement door um, was in fact going to be uh, an exact replica. I, I, I didn't even I didn't even have the sense that it was going to have the, uh, the the panels on it or anything. Um, am I missing something? Is there any indication that it is it is it actually going to at least intention? Even if we don't see the design, and I agree with Virginia, I'd like to see the design. But there is there any indication in the written material submitted that, that it replicates the the existing door? I didn't I didn't there see is that. Not. Anything. Uh, it doesn't say. It talks about uh, keeping the hardware and um, reusing that. Oh. Willow. <laughs> uh, Willow, I need you to, oh, you have to get up. What, a, what do the down. rest of the members think about um, having having more detailed plans about the door and the storm door before we go ahead and approve or, or not? I'm Amelia? I agree because unlike everybody else, I don't know what the current door looks like. Um, so okay. it would be nice to know what it looks like and then also what's going in its place. A picture, a, a picture, a photo of the door was in the, um, is in the photos that were submitted in the original plan. Um, I, I can't access that right now, but if anybody, uh, if Pino uh, or Sam, you have the original plan, if, if that would help, but. I, I would still like to see the uh, the design um, and ask if Linda is okay if we if we defer just final approval until uh, until the April or the March meeting. 
And perhaps if it's a problem, maybe we could try to, um, to do it a March meeting earlier in the month rather than later. And I can lend a door uh, draft stock for the interim. <laughs> what do you use? <laughs> oh. What do you think, um, Linda? That sounds fair. I mean, I, we would obviously prefer it to be on the March agenda versus oh, the April. Oh, we can um, certainly have it in Mar on, at March's meeting. So, you know, as soon as you could get some kind of drawing or or um, more specific plan to yeah. us, we'll yeah. all take a look and we can address it first thing in our next meeting. Okay. Yeah, Presto's um, very um, familiar with historic properties and things like that. So uh, um, she probably has some things that he's he's planning on. But um, let me reach out to Presto, and then I can get them over to you again and and request the to be on the the March docket agenda. Great. Yeah, Jonathan. Yeah, just uh, again, I'm sorry, but could that could that include Linda also at least some uh, some narrative uh, description of the uh, screen screen door as well, just so we know what that looks like. Yep, absolutely. I'll ask for that. Thank you, and let, maybe we can try to do this in in earlier March uh, to accommodate um, mm -hmm. to accommodate the application. Yeah, we usually meet mid mid March. This meet month's meeting is a little later than we usually do, so. Um, how about if I, I send over the sketches when I receive them to you, Samantha? And yeah, and I'll, I'll get them out to everyone. Okay. Yeah. That sounds, that's fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry for the, Sorry. I probably didn't think to ask ahead for that. Um, but some, sometimes with all the, everything flying by. <laughs> so. Completely understand. No, yeah, that, we didn't that, ask ahead fine. either, so. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thanks very much. Thank you. Great. Thanks right. very much. You're welcome to stay or or thank you. Right, I'll, I'll do in touch. Anything. Thank <laughs> bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Hi. Right. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. All right. So we have. Um, well, I see Guy is um, on. And I know, oh, hi, Guy. <laughs> how are you? Doing well. How about yourself? Good. That didn't take um, as long as I thought. Are you, would you like to go ahead and talk about Eaton Street now? Is that, will that work? Sure, yeah. And, and um, uh, Mr. Mr. Rice has joined as well this I see evening. That. So, yep. yeah. Okay, so uh, I, I, I believe, um, you know, this. In, in speaking with them, and I, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but in speaking with uh, the Rice family, um, we had discussed a few of the suggestions in further in depth and, and kind of went through it. And I explained to them, you know, this is kind of the last meeting. So at this point, you should make a decision one way or the other. Are you going to do some of them or not, or whatever it may be, just so everyone knows. Um, and I think they're just ad adverse to putting the um, mullions in the windows. So I think they want to stick with a casement style window, just their preference in the window itself. Um, and I think the other, their home doesn't have the mullions now. So that was kind of a thing where they didn't quite get it. Um, and then the other item being the uh, decorative pieces within the gables. So I think that, um, you know, with the gables not facing the street anymore, not being prominent that, you know, and, and the geography of the house being different, that it would not be as apparent. So they didn't, they didn't, didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's where we stand with, with okay. those two items from our end. Um, would anyone like to say anything from the commission right now? Questions or comments? Virginia? Mm -hmm. Oh, we, you're on mute again. I'm too efficient. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, if the windows don't have mullions in them now, I at least they must be two over one, aren't they? 
there must be some divisions. They're not one over one, are they? I think they're single pane. Yeah, but they're double hung rather than- They are it, double hung. Right. So it's one large sash over another large sash. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm looking at them right now because they're okay. my neighbor, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hmm. So when they're planning to go with casement, that would be just be one large panel of glass versus? Uh, in, in some instances, yes. There may be some like multi-panel casements where um, there may be like a larger pane above and a smaller pane below that awnings out. They haven't finalized the, the window selection yet. So there may be <laughs> some of that that happens as well. Okay. Jonathan? Uh, thank you. I, I, I guess I would say, I mean, I, I appreciate uh, the the point of view of the Rices, um, and thank you for, for sharing that with us and for considering it. Um, and I, I would say, I guess, at the outset that there is uh, very little uh, authority at this particular point that, that we have, other than our efforts to persuade uh, the Rices um, to uh, to what we are suggesting, but um, that being said, um, I guess all I would say is uh, I, I I feel it's it's unfortunate and regrettable in terms of um, just the historical uh, perspective and the historical aesthetic. I mean that leaves um, the structure the structures certainly the, the proposed structures certainly it, it's it's their decision at this point but it, it will have um very little um in fact from my perspective it almost has no uh detail um other than its overall um shape uh it has no, none of the detail uh or the charm that the that the existing historical house has um and i guess just from my perspective that's regrettable and i I can only say that I would wish that they would that they would uh, reconsider, but if not, I just want to express my uh, my regret about that. That's that's unfortunate from my perspective. Anybody else have any? Oh, Amelia. I would agree. Um, we recognize it's your house, and you can do what you like now that the demolition delay has expired. But it's um, now the house is going to be completely lost. So I think that is regrettable, as Jonathan said. Yeah, but we do um, thank you for working with us and and you know considering our at least considering our our suggestions and and thinking about them hard. It seems like you know there was some long thought put into trying to accommodate us, but I can see where, um, you know, it is It is up to you guys, uh, ultimately. Virginia? As I'm, I'm, I'm mute, not muted, so I can go. <laughs> <Here. laughs> uh, so what day does the uh, demolition delay run out? Jonathan? It, it, it has run out. It actually ran out, I believe, on the 13th, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, so as far as working with us, you, you know, um, I don't think we have anything more official we have to do. Um, is that right, Jonathan? I, uh, I don't believe it's necessarily required, but we have a practice of sending... Uh, yeah a letter to the building inspector, because otherwise uh, the building inspector, even though it has been more than six months and he or she can certainly count the six months, but uh, they would be looking to have a letter in the file from us indicating that uh, the six months, uh, okay. the six month period has expired and, and the delay is released. So that's something I, I can share a copy of that letter with you, Sam, so you can then send one. Right, and I'll, I'll get that along to them, you know, in the next couple of days. Um, that way, you, then you should be able to contact the building inspector and, and get started on whatever is next on your end. Yeah. But, and hopefully, um, 
Yeah, I wonder, we have photos of the house and, and, and from the exterior, is that right, Virginia? Uh, we just have them from the street. That's all we're allowed to uh, sure. photograph from. If the uh, applicants wanted to um, take some photos of the uh, interior and around it to document it, I think we'd love to have that in our files. Yeah, yeah we try to um, keep maintain the ar town archive. So whenever we have a chance to get inside some of these historic properties and get photos, we, we collect that um, for the town record. Um, I know I typically take extensive photos prior to demolition. Okay. If that actually ends up happening, it, it still isn't 100%. So um, okay. <clears throat> if if that's the case and, and they're okay with it, um, I'll have them prior to demolition anyways, once they've they've cleared all their belongings sure. out of the home. So if they're okay with it, I'm, I'd be happy to share them with you. That'd be great. Thank you. Yeah. But um, other than send, I'll send the letter and if we could get photos other than that, I think we're, you guys are, are uh, free, of, free of the commission for, from here on out. <laughs> but thanks very much for I know. all the time you spent. Uh, I, I thank you. I know uh, Brooks, Mr. Rice is currently uh, at work, which is why he's probably not talking because he's, yeah. he's, uh, he's in restaurant management. So oh, gosh. I know nights for him are super busy, but um, I, I know in speaking with him earlier this afternoon, um all of us myself and the rice family are thankful for your time i know i know this is a um a committee that actually you know, is out there with an agenda to care for the history of writing and 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 it it wasn't lost on them you know yeah. um i just think this whole covid situation and having so many people in in the house for the we still don't know the foreseeable future has kind of left them in the in a place where what if this happens again and how will sure. we live and you know just needing more space or more aligned space so uh and you guys have been great and i, I appreciate all your accommodations so thank you once again all right great um take care thanks very much we're gonna move on to other very exciting right. more properties <laughs> i will leave you with that thanks good night again, thank you good night right Huh. Okay, the next thing on our agenda is um, 531 Main Street. Um, I think everyone saw this C CPDC. Did I get those initials right? Um, <laughs> was um, approved the project and, and put in the, the wording about having a historic display on the first floor. Um, so I let Andrew know we were okay with with what he drafted and I added and just adding um, de demolition delay hearing. I think it was more specific about what they needed to do. Um, so I, I'll let you know as soon as I hear from them about they put in their um, application for the demo delay process. But um, Virginia? I spoke to Julie tonight just before we started because in tonight's Chronicle, it's, there's a lead article um, in the Middlesex East saying that the former Reading uh, Chronicle building project approved. And it goes on to say in the text that um, the community CPDC um, okayed the demolition of the historic uh, building. And um, that's only going to make people realize that. Um, C, it looks like CPDC has the final say on it, yeah. but, it, but Julie explained, yes, that's just the writer's um, misunderstanding mm -hmm. of the process okay. and that we will be going through the demolition okay. delay. Any, anything else on for that project, Jonathan? Sam, I, I did remember seeing the CPDC decision, but I forget what it said. Do, do you recall, uh, if you could paraphrase, um, what it said with respect to the uh, to the um, historic uh, features that they're going to put in the uh, in the lobby? Um, it said it said essentially that the the owners like shall work with the historical commission to develop a historical display okay. to the public. 
<clears throat> okay, because uh, that's helpful. Um, I know we had some brief discussion about this at the last meeting, but I just want to remind folks um, that I'm I'm glad that that they know that Chris knows um, with complete certainty that it will require a demolition delay hearing because if you remember that got all flummoxed up with respect to the post office and I don't want to be uh, have us put in that position again and um, I know that we have shared with him the the concept of uh, of an early release letter um, and we had some discussion about that at the last meeting but since particularly since the details of what that uh, that display is going to be, and more important, since the CPDC decision, in fact, hopefully says that it will be worked out with us, um, I just want to strongly encourage, I know my position will be that um, we should impose uh, the delay and then obtain a written uh, early release agreement, because uh, that's the only way that I know of um, that we can have some control over what the what the um, circumstances and conditions of that display are. So I just wanted to remind everybody to, to bear that in mind. Yeah, then we'll all be on the lookout for that formal application for that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I, next, I have the Gould Street historic marker. What, do, what does everyone think about um, uh, Dave Tragor's? Um, plans for that. I, maybe Pino, you could put that. Yeah. Up. Do you want the uh, like the the picture? Yeah, the, and then there was the sample text, the text they were going to use, and the, and the photo to show us the kind of style they were going <laughs> to. We're thinking about. everyone see that okay yep yes yeah is there anything um we think they should add about that it seems to encapsulate all the main <laughs> points but virginia probably has some some things we should add sorry about that but, um no it's a standard type bronze um plaque which is great i'm not sure what the size of it is but what I would like and suggest mm -hmm. that on each corner, there's a replica of the Ace Art corner, because that oh, would okay. really yeah. put it together. But that's what an Ace Art corner is. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. Jonathan? Yeah, thank you. I actually that is a great suggestion. I was I was going to suggest I had <clears throat> um <clears throat> a little bit of additional <clears throat> narrative to add. I know you can't put a lot, but um and I was wondering whether Virginia had some some other thoughts about that. But uh my original thought in addition to that um and I'll get to that in a second was to somewhere have uh on that um on that brass plaque um an embossed image of the uh, the envelope of the new ace corners, um, you know, just somewhere have on the plaque it, it just a, an embossed image of what the the envelope looked like. So either that or putting the the uh, the actual corners in each in each of the corners is is just as is just as good an idea. But I agree, something should be included on there. <clears throat> My only concern, Virginia, about about uh, the idea of putting the actual corners on the corners is whether or not it can be done with sufficient detail that you can tell what they are, or is it just gonna look like some weird uh, triangular thing on the corners? Um, but if it, if, it, if it will in fact look like the corners and people will know when you look at it, 
uh, that is the corner, then I'm happy with that. Otherwise, then I would suggest, um, you know, just an embossed image of the of the new ace envelope on it. Mm -hmm. I also uh, had uh, a, a, a proposed language to add, but unfortunately, I can't look at it when you have that up on the screen. Pino, can you take that off? The, ah, okay, great. Thank you. Um, the, the only thing that I was thinking of adding in the narrative is uh, where he says, uh, an owner of Ace Art Company built a factory on this site in 1924 to mass produce and sell worldwide. I was just thinking adding the words, the new Ace photograph mounting corners, um, just some reference to new Ace, because I mean, that's, I don't know whether other people know that, but, but yeah. th that's what, that's how I know them. Um, so just in, change it a little bit to say, uh, to mass produce and sell worldwide, the new ace photograph mounting corners uh, with his patented invention. And I would say inventions because it's more than one uh, invention that he, uh, that he had. And in fact, uh, depending on what the, the exhibit display is gonna be, there may be uh, images of some of, those, some of those other inventions in there. Yeah, I think adding a plural is a good idea. And, and some, yeah, either if they have the new ACE um, design up of the package or talk or mentioning the product name new ACE, I think would probably be a good idea. It's a little more specific and it might, some people might recognize it and say, oh, I didn't know they made those things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, anybody else? Oh, Amelia? Yeah. Just this sentence is kind of clunky. Yeah. Um, mm. Especially with the worldwide, it's a weird placement. Maybe just move that to the end of the sentence. I think he was trying to get it into literally one sentence. And, and you're absolutely right. <laughs> it is incredibly awkward. Um, and it would be great if somebody could think of a better way to, to say all of that in one sentence that's a little bit more grammatically <laughs> clear. Yeah, would you be willing, Amelia, to kind of edit that and send me the sure. yep. and I can I could forward it to Dave or um, with our you know our suggested edits, Jonathan. Yes, just one other thing. I, I get off of that, but I just want to add uh, one other suggestion regarding the whole ghoul thing. If, if people are done commenting on uh, on the design, and let me wait and see if that's the case because I don't want to interfere with other folks. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. Um, I had uh, I had met with Jack. Uh, and every day sort of blurs into the next these days, but maybe a few weeks ago we had a nice uh, we had a nice cup of coffee and um, uh, croissant or something. Um, and um, I, we talked a little bit about uh, his thoughts about the the community event space. Uh, and I had, um, I had just mentioned to him, and I wanted to raise with you all, I think I might've mentioned it to you, Sam, that um, whenever we, at some point, I, we will hopefully hear from Dave uh, once we get past this plaque regarding the actual design of the uh, exhibit space. And um, I, I had just sort of wanted to feel Jack out about, you know, I, I know he's off of the, the commission, but uh, if the commission was interested in utilizing his um, his skills and his talents, would he be interested and willing to continue to provide input, um, you know, sort of as our um, consultant, if we wanted to do that, uh, to, to more or less continue to play that role? I, I wasn't putting it out there because obviously it's not my, my position, but I wanted to know how he felt about it. Um, and he said he'd be delighted to do that. So um, I know we haven't talked about that yet, but I just wanted to throw that out. At some point, it's it's going to fall back to us to um, to utilize uh, somebody to be the point person on that. And I just wanted to throw that out for the group for consideration. Who's first? I don't. I think that's a great idea if he's if if Jack's willing to. You know, he already uh, has thought about it and is familiar with the project and. And, you know, I, I think that'd be great to continue to have him help us out with that. Charles? Oh, you're on mute. Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. I think that would be great. 
if he'd be willing to do that. I don't know. He definitely was. He definitely he said he'd be delighted to do it. I think he'd okay. I think he'd love to do it, just so you know. So Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So maybe would you want to reach out to him, Jonathan, and say we we'd love for him to keep working on that and or I can or I can do that and we can I I'd be happy to get back to him, and and uh, I I did we did talk about getting together for for coffee uh, again. We had been doing that during the, the years, um, so I'd be happy to do that again and let him know that at some point, whenever you uh, Sam, um, you know, hear back from Dave yeah. and they're ready for that, um, that he he should expect to hear from us. That's yeah. great. I'll be happy to do that. Okay, next up we have our historic inventory properties. I think, I think Virginia, you contacted the folks on Main Street. Is that true? And they're yes. interested in, in applying. Yes, and they'd be willing to have their property done at the same time the others are being done. Great. And and J Jonathan, yeah, did you talk to the... Yes, and I, I did, thank you, uh, Virginia. I did see your email uh, to Sam about that. And I did follow up with uh, Andy and with Kurt. Um, mm -hmm. Both of them, uh, it's always a treat to talk to Kurt. I, I don't know if others <laughs> have, but uh, I know Virginia has. He's, yeah. he's a delight. Yeah. Um, as is Andy, don't get me wrong, but Kurt Kurt's a unique, a unique personality, but they would be delighted. Um, now, what I wanted to suggest, and I just mentioned it to Kurt, um, that we were talking about doing it in our April meeting. Um, and I wanted to suggest again to, to this group, um, if when we, when we pick the March meeting, maybe we could also pick the tentative April date and then I or you, Sam, could get back to them just to make sure that they know that the date in April, they know it now what the date is in April that we're expecting to have the meeting so they can sure hold it in their calendars and somebody should get back to the gentleman in the uh, in the third property as well. So they know the date that we're talking about in advance and can hold it so they can be available. Yeah. Kurt did ask, you know, is there anything that he needs to do? And I, I said, you know, it's, it's pretty straightforward. He obviously should plan to be there. He's more than welcome. He doesn't have to. Um, and that, you know, we would, we would be presenting information. I said to him that, that it had been my practice to simply, um, identify some information uh, when it comes time to, to talk about the historical aspects of the property and why we want to know the inventory. I was simply um, picking some information off of the form B. Um, he obviously knows what that information is and that's what we'd be doing. I defer to, to you folks if you want to handle the, the process any differently, but I did say to him that there wasn't any need for him necessarily. Um, we would cover that, but he would be more than welcome if he if he wanted to discuss anything uh, about the historical uh, aspects about the, or the cultural aspects about the house that he'd be welcome to. Um, I hope I didn't misstate that at all, but I think that was what we normally do. Virginia? Well, Kurt has done far more research than any of us would have done on a single property. So be prepared to hear a lot of information, but <laughs> it's, it's well documented and he's done a lot of work over the years on it. So, he has even more information now, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I forgot where, so our, our, I remember seeing the Hillcrest information and the Main Street. Are we at a good point at, with those to, to go ahead and <laughs> present things? Yeah, we we yeah. drafted the form Bs. We finalized the form Bs. We actually that's what I thought. Remember, yeah, yeah. We, we were actually going to go forward. Ironically, last April we had picked the date okay. and we had sent. I had sent. We are we are required to before we do anything to send a letter to the owners of the properties, letting them know that we are developing a form B and contemplating pursuing it, et cetera, et cetera. That letter I think has to go certified or registered or something. Um, but we actually had done that, Sam. So okay. we were we were completely ready to go with respect to those two properties. But at this point, we do not have. Oh, we do have a form B on the third property. So we should probably all uh, take a look at that. Um, I we probably should have done that. I didn't think of it, but uh, uh, I didn't look at it. But I assume it's good to go. I don't know, Virginia, what your thoughts are, but we should it probably is. okay. We should probably all in, in anticipation, at least for the March meeting, 
take another look at that just to make sure that's good to go. And if that is, then we're ready to, to move ahead. And I'll be happy to share with you my thoughts about what I think the steps are. Great. Yeah, if we could um, maybe circulate those. I'm not sure if I have the Main Street uh, Form B. Whatever. Ron sent it around, I think. Uh, yeah, I'll look for it. But yeah, if we could all kind of look that look those over and I can put it on next month's agenda just to make sure we're not, you know, if anyone wants to include anything or we need to make any changes, then we'll be ready for April. Virginia? The important thing is I think we have to um, put it in the newspaper for a public hearing, so. Okay, oh, okay. Yeah, that happens. The first thing is the letter to people because that that is supposed to be uh, the letter to the homeowners. That's the first step in the process. Mm -hmm. um, and that, I believe, is actually 30 days out from the hearing date. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the newspaper uh, notice, and there also need to be letters, uh, I'm sorry, notice to the abutters um, that, that we have to send out. Um, uh, and, I, and I believe Amanda had already said that she, she, can, she can generate that and get that going. That will be probably at our expense. Um, so we'll have to we'll have to pay for that. Uh, so there's the the notice in the paper uh, and the letters to the abutters, but all of those are, I believe, no more than uh, 14. It may even be seven days out from uh, from the hearing. Okay. So you got plenty of time for that. I could maybe um, check in with you, Jonathan, to make sure that those letters go out uh, to, to everyone ahead of time. And I don't know if maybe during the meeting, if if maybe. We each want to take one of the homes, like, and actually do the presenting part for each one. Like, maybe Virginia, you want to just read through our form B, and um, like you were discussing, Jonathan, you know, um, sure, talking about what you know what's going on in the form B, and just presenting that during the hearing. Um, you know, if everyone. Oh. If we want one person to take, different person to take each of those properties and present, that might be, sure. make it a little, little more lively. And then we can, the homeowners can chime in uh, if they want. <laughs> Maybe we'll keep a timer on Kurt. And <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. I'm getting... thinking that might be, that April meeting might be good to try to not put a whole heck of a lot else on the agenda that night. Cause I'm guessing that'll take us a little while to go through each one. Um, yeah, we'll try to keep it light as far as other things that that night. Um, it should be relatively straightforward, I would think. Yeah. I don't think you're going to get a lot of a lot of input, but that is a good idea. Do we think, just as I'm thinking out loud, um, we'll have three of them. Um, are, are, is it what do we think is best? Is it best to do like one at a time, say one at seven, then one at seven thirty, one at eight o'clock, or to do all three together. I mean, what, what do you what do you think, Virginia? You have more experience with yeah. this, uh, Charlene too. We ha we haven't done it through Zoom before. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we've never done a hearing like this for adding just three because we've always added large amounts, um, oh. and then the brouhaha started so now we have a an addition to the bylaw that says we must uh, notify the uh app the people mm -hmm. and uh have a public hearing so okay. this will be the first time the commission's done that okay i wonder if maybe just spacing them out just so the folks involved can plan if they don't want to sit through the whole meeting good point oh. <laughs> i agree more for yep. the more for the the butters and the owners if anyone wants to show up. But yeah, sure. Yeah, technically, if we're done with one of them early, we're not supposed to start the next one till the time on the agenda. Mm, yeah, maybe we make it a fifteen minute intervals, and if we run late, long on one. Yeah, fifteen twenty. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's going to, I mean, yeah. we have, I, I don't think we've yeah. done any of this before, but I don't think there's going to be, uh, I mean, certainly the largest uh, hue and cry would be from the homeowners who don't want to be on, on the inventory. And in this case, <laughs> they all do want to be yeah. on the inventory. Yeah. So I, yeah. I think this is pretty much going to be a no brainer. Um, mm -hmm. So I think, I so think, we'll yeah, just 20, 20 minutes. we'll fairly closely. And then if we yeah. run over, that's fine. Mm -hmm. 
Anything else on that? Uh, oh, oh, so you, the utility boxes, I checked in with Andrew McNichol and told him we'd, we'd really like that one on, in Memorial Park. And he said they are not at any point where they're ready to start picking boxes. Um, I think that I don't know how extensive the project's going to be this year. And so he said to go ahead and lay claim to whatever two we want and to make our plans. Go ahead, Jonathan. Just yeah. curious, Sam. The, I, Pino and I had a brief conversation about yeah. this. The only one that I'm aware of is the utility box that's uh, that faces Memorial Park on uh, ha on uh, ha is that Harrison? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Is that is that is that the the utility box we're talking about? There's not one right. over on uh, on Salem Street. Okay. Right. Yeah, that one. So um, I guess we need as a, we should talk about what other one we want, Virginia. Yeah. The one at Memorial Park is about five feet tall, so it's very. Yeah, it's big. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we could start planning that and picking another one. Um, and we, we don't have to, I'll just let Andrew know once we are a little more firm on, on starting them. But um, I definitely told them we, we'd want to reserve the Memorial Park one. Go ahead, Jonathan. Um, actually, just thinking out loud here, since it's already go practically March, and if we're talking about doing this uh, in um, this summer, uh, we should probably be thinking about uh, getting into the archives, and we, we should probably nail down pretty quickly um, getting into the which are the two utility boxes we're talking about, mm -hmm. uh, and then getting into the archives to to come up with the with the pictures because before you know it, it, it will be April or May, and um, we yeah. got and get back in touch with uh, Franklin Marvel as well. So just a thought, you know, when I did see Sam, um, I, I, I want to get back into the, into the archive because I have some materials, um, that I need to put in the archives that have been sitting here in my office, uh, for, <laughs> for a year. Um, and Jack, Jack was good enough to give me that, that framed, uh, uh, framed, uh, picture of the, uh, or the actual new ace uh, corner. So I want to get that in. I, I think all, I, I was anticipating just calling uh, uh, Amanda or Julie and asking if I could arrange for a time to get in there myself. And I just wanted to say that I did notice on something somewhere that uh, some indication that town hall is open by appointment. So my belief is in, in particular you, Sam, um, for, for any number of reasons as the chair and in terms of the, you know, the archive preservation stuff um, should probably think if you want to get in there or anybody want to get in there, um, I think it'd be perfectly okay, particularly you, Sam, to, you know, to contact Julie and just say, you know, you'd like to, you'd like to get in there for, the appointment for an hour or whatever. Yeah. Just make an appointment. I don't think it'll be an issue at all. Awesome. And I should say to you as well that I have the uh, I have a key which uh, I, I know uh, Virginia I think you have a key but you have the honorary key. Um, I have the uh, the chair's key that I, I got from Ron and I, I at some point would love to turn that back over um, to you Sam. Yeah, maybe we could plan our appointments at the at an overlap you know next to each other and yeah we can meet down there. I've got a. It's hard to not, I usually find I end up like on a Friday thinking, I'd like to go down to the, you know, I've got some time on a Friday and then I'm like, oh, they're not even open. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. I might, Inconvenient. Yeah. Um, but definitely, yeah, I want to just make sure everything's doing all right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sort a little. Um, well, I and I, I'm I'm also happy. I'm obviously Amanda has a key too, but I'm I, yeah. If you, I'm more than happy to drop uh, you just if you want just to make arrangements. I can you know I'm pretty much available anytime, and I can just bring the key over to you anytime if you sure. want. So uh, I'm happy to do that. Yeah, Bridget, uh, yeah. Uh, Laura Jim, the town clerk, has said in the past that she would let us in on Friday because she's usually there working. So oh, right. there is a possibility. Yeah. I will check with her. I bet she, yeah, she likes to go in on a Friday when it's quiet and just get, <laughs> yeah, now that the elections are done, she was, I worked the election day and oh. you know, she was all out. 
Um, yeah. So I imagine. Uh, I do think Go just ahead. given the whole, just to be safe, um, that's, I'm sure that's true. And I know um, she's all, she's almost always there, but yeah. just given the whole COVID thing and the, uh, yeah. the, uh, the sobriety with which town hall is taking it, just clear yeah. your, clear your going okay, there, yeah. even if you're arranging it on Friday with, yeah, I think, with, with Julie. Yeah, we should always let Amelia, um, um, Amanda, and well, we can let Amelia know. <laughs> the man don't enjoy no you know at schedule yeah. things they but only it, allow a certain number of people in so a lot of people have been going to work and <clears throat> i don't know what it's like now but during but during the uh the earlier periods they were allowing people who work at town hall there but they were only going on certain days okay. because they didn't want yeah. any more than x number of people there so but it's nice to know that might be friday might be mm -hmm. possible all right that's all I have on the, on that. If maybe um, we can, before the next meeting, be thinking about what other um, utility box may want to use. Jonathan? Are we going beyond? I mean, I know we talked before about uh, there are a the couple. one at uh, the depot uh, and the one on uh, Woburn and Summer. Are we looking to to consider other ones, or are we, or is it just a question of which of those two? Do I you think. Want to? Hmm. I was thinking we were. Uh, our, it's my understanding our plan was made to do take two more this year. So. Um, right, but I'm saying one other in addition to Memorial Park. But when you said right. think about it, are we thinking about about doing another box, a second box, other than either the depot or Woburn and Summer, or? Is oh, it just a question of picking one of the two? You could pick one of those two, or if anyone's discovered a new utility box they just love, we could consider another one. But <laughs> I think no, either of those solutions would be good. Um, I don't have any strong feelings either way. Um, my only concern, I mean, I, I like, the, I love the depot. That would be my my first choice, but but everybody should take a look at it. it it's there and it's relatively prominent even though it's not so much on Wilburn it's on uh uh high high street yeah. but but it's it is actually smaller than than most of the others so um everybody should take a look at that and then we can you know yeah. oh virginia what i know the photo uh, in the conference room where we used to be able to meet of um the the putting together of memorial park do you know if that exists digital digitally? Would we have to get it scanned or? I don't believe it is. We had those photos um, conserved up at uh, Andover, but um, I don't know that we had any images done of them. Okay. Charlene, do you remember? You're muted, Charlene. I don't think we did, because at the time, I, I don't think we thought we'd need to. You know? Yeah, it's, you don't always yeah. anticipate that. Is there, are there other photos from that? It would be worth looking in the archives, right? Yeah. 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 Those are the prominent ones. I don't know of others, so. Okay. Yeah, maybe, yeah, I could. Try to pop into the. I'm thinking out loud that um, there. I think um, one appeared on the municipal light calendar, and so that must be uh, reduced. Um, I can look through and see when that was. Mm -hmm. Well, are you guys saying the ones in the conference room with original that size, or were they or were they enlarged from something else? No, they were original. Those that are the size. Photos. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. If we if we want to use that image, that image, we can. I can think about the best way to get it out of its frame and maybe mm -hmm. take some digital photos of it or get it done at any DCC or some some you know. It, it you know Franklin, Franklin may have I, I know we're in reluctance to give those out, but Franklin may have a capacity. He's a pretty handy guy. He may have an ability to to take okay. that digital that digital uh, that image and and somehow digitize it uh, to the right size for uh, for the utility yeah. box. 
yeah, it's really long. So it probably would wrap around that box several times. So I mean, <laughs> you probably only need a, you know, a section, smaller portion of it. Yeah. Yeah. But I like the fact that my house is in it. <laughs> yeah. but there are no houses on Harrison really built yet. So the, oh. you can see our, my place and whatever gar garage was there before this, we've got a stone building now for a garage. <laughs> That's fine. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes. Point of information. Uh, I saw, I, now I can't remember where I saw it. I, I've said that repeatedly. <laughs> I'm getting to <laughs> worry about myself. Uh, but somewhere, maybe it was, maybe Sarah had shared it with us, but there was a the scrapbook. Yeah, there was a plan for Memorial Park that, right. that is dramatically different than what it actually turned out to be. I just right. out of curiosity, how, how did it go from that, which which had a lot of a lot of fields and a lot of uh, play fields? How did it go from that to, to what it is today? I think uh, that it is an Olmstead drawing because uh, Manning, who lived here in Reading and had the Manning nurseries, um, worked with Olmstead. So just to have the name Olmstead drawing is pretty impressive. But I think um, they didn't follow through because of money. And over the years, people, they put in the ice rink, the tennis courts and things like that. So it's just evolved. But the deed restriction on there, I think everyone knows is very specific that it has to be passive type recreation. Um, so that's always an issue when the town tries to do something different with the area. Hmm. It just led me to believe, Virginia, that that, that that plan that was proposed was something that was given either by Olmstead or by somebody else to the, the uh, families that donated it and they must have rejected it because they only wanted it left for passive use is the only thing I could think of. Perhaps I, I don't know. I was surprised yeah. to see that it was it was intended or at least drawn um, as a proposal for such active use. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I want to make the center of the park a big wildflower meadow. Oh. <laughs> Pretty. <laughs> That'd be different. <laughs> Get some butterflies around. Yeah. <laughs> or patches of wildflowers you could walk through. I mean, it's just all grass, you know. I think we should plant. Uh, we should plant uh, a, a whole bed of poppies, and we could all then recreate the scene from The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, any updates on our sort of review of the demo delay process? And I just it. had a question. Um, Pino and I haven't gotten to this because we were getting up to speed at Historic District, but I'm wondering if the more experienced folks can say something about what um, objections we should anticipate so that we can do some research to circumvent those. Like last month, Sam said something about she wondered how many houses we're talking about, and I did some quick digging on that, and it looks like less than 4% of the houses in town, the dwellings. That was another thing that um, our inventory has um, dwellings and then also commercial spaces. Oh, okay. So do you think we need to mess with or even um, raise the issue of how many commercial, that's what I thought too, Virginia. I just <laughs> kind of edited the historical inventory so it was just dwellings. And if that's the case, only 4% of the town's dwellings are um, would be subject to this delay. So if people are like, oh, we don't want to mess with people's property rights, then we can say, mm -hmm. yeah, but it's not that many houses. Yeah, so it's but, perspective. Yeah. yeah. So Jonathan, you've been to town meeting, Virginia, you did this at town meeting. What kind mm -hmm. of stuff do you think people are gonna have a problem with? 
to me, the big issue is the libertarian issue. And, you know, people just don't want to, there shouldn't be any restrictions on what people, there are enough restrictions already with respect to the god awful zoning laws uh, that, that inhibit what people can, can do with their property. There shouldn't be any, any other restrictions. And that to me is the big one. But, but to your point, I, I saw that information that you had um, that you had provided uh, about the percentage, and that is really helpful. And I think you commented, Sam, that you know that that would be a good argument that it's it's so few. And it made me realize that what perhaps is the best argument at this point um, is that uh, since its inception, um, there there hasn't been any any structure that's been included uh, that hasn't been with the the full agreement of the of the property owners and at this point all all it, it, with regard to all 350 properties or however many there are um, th there's there's nobody who was on it involuntarily they everybody already knows and has known for no they haven't no that was the the whole point about uh, four or five years ago that the homeowners had not been notified that they were going to be in the inventory. And it, that was never an issue until we made the demolition delay applicable to everyone on the inventory. So that's when the uprising came. So, so everybody who's on there, are you saying they don't know? Now they don't know. No, they do now. But at the time, they didn't uh, because they right. received letters. But yeah, it, before it was just an honorary thing. And then they we tied the demolition delay to the inventory properties. And those people at that time were never really individually notified that that was the case. So right. that made a big fuss. Right. But that's what I'm saying is that at this particular point in time, there, there, there isn't a, a property on the inventory for which the homeowner um, isn't is aware Right. Um, and I would argue, uh, you know, is 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 amenable to having the property uh, on it. And the other thing that I was thinking of also is that um, we should we talked before about the letter uh, that that we want to send out to everybody uh, who is uh, an owner of a property, a structure on the inventory. Um, again, reminding them about the uh, the value of being. Uh, being a uh, caretaker of a historical property, and do they want to have the marker? Um, and then that way, we can at least we can at least acknowledge that every one of these properties um, is aware of it, and we haven't heard anything from anybody um, in opposition to it. Um, so I, I just think those arguments would counter the that libertarian argument that we don't we don't want we don't want any more restrictions on our property. The truth is that everybody to all of the properties to which it, it applies, everybody is already aware, and as far as we know, is on board. So if it's not like, go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, if someone sold a house now that was on the inventory, and uh, then would, how would the new owners find out except, except for the old owners passing that information along? Yeah, that's a fair point. We did talk about that. We don't, we don't know how they would find out other than by word of mouth of the, uh, of the homeowner. I got to ask, I got someone two doors down and I should ask them if they know. <laughs> well, actually, every homeowner received a certificate and they are supposed to pass it on to the new owners. Whether that help happens or not is yeah. another whole story. So. But that's a, that's a, that's an issue to your point, Amelia, that, you know, that would be an argument that folks would make is that um, it, it's possible that houses could have been sold several times to people who have no idea uh, that they're on there. So that, that's, a, that's an argument against ex increasing it. It's an argument against what I've been arguing, actually. I think if we can show that we, that, you know, made people aware as much as possible and there's a system that right. will work. That's why I like the idea of sending a letter in the next, you know, whatever it is, the next six months or however, so yeah. that we can at least say everybody who owns a, a home knows about it. Uh, about that, I was thinking, why are we messing around trying to get the homeowners' names? Why can't we just send a letter that says, Dear Historical oh. Homeowner? And then we could just get that out quickly. Um, we were originally looking to see when, when houses were sold, uh, I think. Pino? 
Um, yeah, I mean, Jonathan, that's what we kind of discussed when you dropped off the packet, right? I mean, mm -hmm. maybe if we're just going to send to the addresses and not personalize them, then let's just do that. Is that what we we're kind of discussing? Well, what's the what's the pro and con about either either option? I don't well, I mean, it'd be a lot easier just to send them to the to the addresses. We wouldn't have to track down each owner. Virginia. We we used to uh, send out postcards to announce meetings that uh, because we used to have programs in Preservation Month and have speakers, and um, we had an antiques road show and we had a lot of activities and we always addressed everything to historic property owner da, 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 da. Hmm. so that worked quite well but I, we, yeah. well i have the opportunity um i'd encourage uh, new members to watch uh town meeting in april um, even though this will be more on budget items, I think it's worthwhile for you to watch and get a sense of how it flows and how the procedures are. Wouldn't you agree, uh, Jonathan? I would, but unfortunately, I have a feeling. I, 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 in fact, I saw today the select board. It's going. It looks like it's going to be a Zoom meeting again. So it's yeah. it's not going to be at all uh, uh -oh. what, what is likely to be the dynamic of an actual town yeah. meeting. Because I mean, the last several town meetings that have been Zoom are completely non -event, uh, uneventful. Yeah, okay. It's a great idea, it's important, but it's more relevant when, when it's actual physical town meeting and, and I don't think it's gonna be. I had a couple of thoughts about the historic properties. Could we ask, like if someone has been like really intent on demolishing something can we ask them to salvage all the like trim and some of the older house parts that might be a way to save some of the house we've done that in the past has that been successful or we only did it once on the property on haven street i believe it was we got a newel post and a couple of items that um I'm not sure it was Haven Street, but anyways, um, it was only because the chairman at the time um, knew someone that had a entity, I don't know whether it was a shop or what, that could use those items. So um, because you can't have a where we can't establish right. a warehouse. No, not for us to keep, but I'm just, yeah. there are several places that just sell, we went to a place in New Hampshire that just sells old house parts and I got some right doorknobs that match right. <laughs> right right I mean it wouldn't keep it in the town but maybe you know a lot of these places have this great woodwork and doors and things that could be used by somebody right Jonathan yeah I mean I that's an important um that's an important function of historical preservation for sure but from the standpoint of of our historical commission um, unless we had a repository that we knew of where we were, we were storing that salvage. Um, now, first of all, it's a hard thing to ask somebody who's demolishing their home uh, to salvage the stuff, but they keep it. Um, and yeah. second, I, I have just my personal feeling as well. It's, it's great to preserve that stuff, uh, even if it's you know geographically elsewhere. I have far less interest in in pursuing that that strongly uh, if it's going to be out of this town. Um, that's mm -hmm. just my own personal feeling, but. What's we we, we have asked them. I mean, I know Virginia, just with respect to 16 Eaton Street, you asked them to preserve the detail, I think, on uh, mm -hmm. on the uh, the gables. So uh, mm -hmm. we, we do do that, but it's hard to it's hard to control it. Yeah. Amelia? Yeah. What's the name of that consignment place that's near Calabusos? Calarasos? Mm. It just went out of business. Oh, it did not. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. Huh. Got my coffee table there. <laughs> and never mind then. <laughs> <laughs> there got to be other places like that though, somewhere. Well, that's the only one I can think of in town. Although yeah. there is a guy um, who does. I think he's a townie. His name's Stephen something. He does. Um, Stephen Trites. That's the one. He does refer refurbishment and refinishing yeah. and stuff. Right. Um, Oh, up on Pierce Street? Yeah. Um, I think. 
-hmm. His wife, his wife was on the historical commission many Why years ago. Oh. Huh. <laughs> anyway, that's another thought, I guess. Uh -huh. And then my other thought was maybe in our, as we're looking at some of the historic properties, we look for some that are not so well maintained and, and maybe try to make some connections with funding um, for some, you know, cause we were talking about how it seems like a lot of the several of the past houses have been in pretty rough shape and we haven't been able to keep them. So maybe we'll keep our eyes out for ways to help, you know, figure out which ones are start are really falling apart and maybe, or on their way, letting people know, you know, if we're gonna mail stuff to homeowners, maybe the next step is to mail them some info if we know about grants and things. Um, Jonathan. Yeah, that, I, that's a really great idea. We did talk about that at the last meeting. I think I um, I raised it in the context of the, those preservate those mass historical commission preservation grants. But um, and I think it's a great idea to do. And maybe there there are other funding resources. But I would I would think Sam that the the first step in doing that is to have us prepared with a list of the most needy uh, right. structures. So. It is a great idea, and it's one of those tasks that we ought to undertake, yeah. which is, you know, thinking, go, you know, go go through the inventory and do a survey of which ones are the ones that we might want to do, so that, you know, when 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 money becomes available, we can identify the structure that we think needs it. Those were the two things I thought about this this past month, Amelia. Um, so I was thinking about this research that. Um, we were going to be doing for um, the presentation. Maybe ahead of that, maybe that should get bumped down the list and I and Pino or somebody else could start working on this historical letter because if we lay the groundwork with these people that they know that they have historic houses, that helps us when we get to the research bit. Um, mm -hmm. So does anybody have um, examples of letters that got, or these cards that you sent in the past, what kind of stuff went into them? They were generally um, announcing an event that we were holding. So, mm -hmm. but then when the um, clacking program began, we uh, had a letter that went out to everyone. Um, Sam, did you look into that? The um, the people who did the plaques are they still doing? Would they still do our plaques for us? I did not. I think I don't have any of that info. Maybe I should. Um, John, I have it. Uh, oh. I, I can either contact them. I'm happy to send you that stuff. If you want to do it, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, they they at least know who I am. Although I've only done it maybe three or four times, but I'd be happy to give them a call and just you know tell right. them. Right. Yeah, that'd be updating. good to know they're there. Yeah, to know they're there. Sure, I'll, I'll call would, them and let you know. That way, before we go sending out things saying, get your marker made and then yeah. didn't have a place. Yeah, I mean, at this but point, I, it, let's hope they're in business. And to, to Amelia's point, Sam, um, and also Virginia commenting, uh, I, I vaguely remember just sort of scrolling through in some uh, insane time when I was in the archives, just looking at the, uh, at the files. I couldn't, I, I'd be hard pressed to tell you where it is. But there, there are letters, there's correspondence, old letters that, that um, the folks in the past have written. And it, it may be possible, um, I mean, either maybe Amelia could get in there as well, uh, since she, she may be able to locate on the database the easiest, the letters. But I know I've seen them because I've, I've played around in there just sort of scrolling through the, uh, through the documents. And, and saw those letters, and maybe we could find them, um, find something that would help you, Amelia. Okay. So, you know, somebody, I mean, I, I, again, I'm not looking to volunteer for all of these things, but I, I'd be happy to try to do it, or Amelia, you know, again, on this subject of getting into town hall, I'm sure we could each individually get in there. I, I would also say, by the way, that I've been in there with Jack when we were originally doing, um, during this COVID thing, when we were originally doing some of the Gould Street stuff, uh, they did allow the two of us in the archive room together, um, you know, for a brief period of time, for an hour. So I would suggest that we could probably get two people in the archive room for an hour if that would help either. Um, so just keep that in mind, but th there's gotta be letters on the files. And 
just to review, we had talked about putting in the letter about the plaques. We had talked about putting in the letter some sort of, um, you know, reminder about the demolition delay. What else were we going to put in it? Did anybody have thoughts? You know, it really started with the plaques, as I recall. We were, it, it, at least it was on the conversation about, you know, getting, generating a little bit more interest in the plaques. And that's when we were talking about, you know, not being that specific and saying, if you already have a plaque, great, but, you know, the plaques are still available. I, I don't remember that there was any, too many other things we were thinking of talking about. Anybody else have thoughts on that? Did we talk like, about present like history? One, one or two topics is plenty, you know, to get, you know, I don't know if we get people's attention for a really long, detailed thing about everything we do. Yeah. You know, maybe see okay. the house plaque, I think, might, might interest the most folks. And then, you know, we can kind of follow up with other. Yeah. You know, just, you know, just wanted to reach out. You know, we we haven't really communicated with, with everybody in a long time. Just want to, again, you know, let you know we're here. Thank you for, you know, preserving yeah. these homes and caretaking yeah. these homes. and. You know, we're available for whatever, and we have this house marker program. If you're already in it, great. If not, you know, reach out to us, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Great. Sure. Should we mention anything about um, how someone could get information that we have on the inventory sheet? Like they're available at the, if you can get to the library or the town hall or, you know, how people could get that information about their property. Sure, That's good, good to mention because that might fend off a lot of requests, you know, if folks are like, yeah, Virginia. Uh, you can go uh, recommend that they go to MACRIST and all the forms are there through Mass Historical yep. uh, Commission that, on their website. I, mean, I don't think ours are all downloaded into Reading's website, but later on, I want to talk about Reading's website. Ooh, okay. <laughs> all right. We also have uh, volunteer positions, so where anybody who wants to uh, be an associate on the historical commission, join up. Oh yeah. Okay. Right. Oh yeah. Which okay. reminds me, it, just as an aside, uh, Sam, did we? Do we? Where were we uh, with respect to the two positions? Did we have to follow? Did we have to reach out? Did we talk about having you reach out to the? Uh, Select board. The select board well, to... On my list to send them a thank you note for adding Pino and uh, mention we have two associate positions. We like vacancies, yeah, okay. yeah. But it is it's on my radar still. <laughs> yeah. All right. Should we move on to finances? Is there anything particular? Uh, uh, wait, you just Charles reminded me, right? Sorry, Charles, our treasurer now, right? Right. I am. Yeah. Um, nothing's really changed, but um, I still have that um, $65 for that book that I need to submit, okay. but I don't know how, what the process is now. And I sent out an email. I mean, somebody, I mean, I could call the town hall, but I think this is something we should have a procedure for this type of thing. So when I figure it out, I'll write it down. So the next person oh, great. know what how mean, to what do, you, do what these do things. What do you mean, Charlie? What I mean, you, you submit an expense report to get but reimbursed. You, but you've already, you've already, you've already spent the, you've spent the money, right? Yes, I have. And we but have gotten reimbursed. I don't know the process. But isn't it a question of us? And maybe I'm wrong, but I know what it had always been, which was we, we vote to approve. Uh, the spending of the money, and then we get the minutes, and we submit the form that that I I, I mean I know I have a jack at them. Um, submit the form to uh, to to town hall, and and they take care of it. Okay. Well, you know I sent out an email to everybody asking who knew, to and us? I didn't get. I didn't get that. I didn't either. I didn't either. Oh. I checked it, and it said it was sent. Huh. But, well, okay, wait, I mean, well, I, maybe that's why. Well, that's I think what, what we do is if we were at a meeting is we would just move to approve uh, the we spending all, of- we, did. we already have. We did? Yes, we yes. already did that. So but I, it's the form and who it goes to. But I didn't see, did, has that been in the minutes? 
I don't remember that from the yeah. minutes. Yeah. It was months ago. It was January. Oh, yeah. that we approved it? Yep. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. That probably, that, that, that may be my fault. But, well, or, you know, it fell through the cracks when, with, with Jack's departure. Um, yeah. So uh, what I will do is I'll, I'll follow up with you, Charlene, and I'll send you okay. what the form, it's a simple form. It's, a, it, you just fill out the information. You attach it, the, uh, the, uh, the minutes from the meeting. I, I believe I, if I remember correctly, yeah. I'll check this, but I think you just, you just give it to uh, to Amanda and, and it gets processed. Okay, I send my email to reading.historical.commission. Does that only go to the archives? No. Go but it's nowhere. Uh, wait, it's, it's RHC it nowhere? at, isn't it RHC at, at uh, Reading, now I'm drawing a blank, at Reading. That's R why R no one replied. <laughs> What is our forwarding? What's our email address? RHC at ci.reading.mass.us. So that's our that's our RHC email address. Yep. All right. Send it to that. And we'll all get it. Amanda will actually also get it. Yeah. But I'll I'll send I'll I'll communicate to you tomorrow with the information. Okay. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. But we should have a procedure. We do on how to how to do that. Probably a procedure on how to um, take care of the minutes, where the form is, who it gets submitted to, and just general things, so yeah. that when someone else comes into that position, yeah. they have guidelines. Yeah, that's good um, additions to our our member packets. Yeah, that packet. You know, they can yep. be one for the treasurer and one for the secretary. Yeah. Um, yep. And I put that on the agenda. I haven't done anything about it at this point. <laughs> but <laughs> speaking of that, can I ask a question? Yeah. Jack also gave me his new member binder uh, back okay. when we we all originally had them. Uh, I asked Pino, who was uh, if if he needed one, and he has one. So I. I don't, this, uh, does anybody not have that binder? Uh, I think Amelia, you already have one. Yeah. Maybe that could go in the filing cabinets in the town hall in our- For the yeah. next person. Yeah. Although actually once, I think that you had mentioned, uh, Sam, that you were looking to, weren't you looking to somehow- I thought it, I, yeah, I, I, my intention is to go through, I'm just gonna go through the main, um, uh, the index and see what's in there and maybe add some things and just slowly right. update, do some updates to it, you know? So, I, I mean, I have, I have Jack sitting right here behind me and um, when, when we have finalized what that binder then looks like, can, then we'll, we'll make sure this one has everything and then we'll put that in the, uh, in the, in the file cabinet. Yeah. That's still on my, my running list of things to do. <laughs> There's no end to that list. I know. Did I not? Did I not tell you that? That no, you did. <laughs> and uh, Jonathan did kindly uh, write up a draft of our yearly report, which I'll look through soon. And um, is that something, Jonathan? Everyone else needs to. Should I send it around and ask for some comments before I give it to town? Oh. I never did. I mean, Charlene and Virginia probably know better than I do, but I know uh, since I've been on here, uh, Jack, Jack, Ron asked Jack to write one during his year, and he just did it and sent it, okay. sent it to everybody afterwards. Ron did one. I've done two or three of them, right. and I, I just did them, and then I sent them to everybody yeah. afterwards. I'll do that same thing. Sounds great. Particularly since says my memory is that it's supposed to be there by February 28th. Yeah, <laughs> that's still on my radar. I think it's March 1st. We get a like, oh, we got a one day reprieve or something. <laughs> well, the good news is it should be all done. Yeah. <laughs> no. They're very important because they do keep a, a track of what you've done, accomplished through the year. Yeah. And I, I keep a file of them here at home too. So right. I always like to get a copy for my own files. And I'll tell you, that's why and you'll see, and I think you guys have all known in the past years that I've done them, they were four and five pages long. I mean, I, I, I actually, it's kind of like the enjoyment that I get. You're going to read this the wrong way. The enjoyment I get when I put together all my information for my taxes so I can, so I can see 
what what I spent and what I earned over the year. But I, I actually have thoroughly, it, it took a lot of time, but I, I went through all of the minutes, I went through all of the agendas and uh, and tried to, you know, then generated a list of all of the different things that we did during the year. And, and yeah. it actually, it, it actually is, is, is interesting to see the, the, to see the, the work that we've done. And I can tell you, if anybody has looked at, because one of the things I have to drop off at the archives is the town uh, gives us when, when it publishes the town annual report into right. which these individual reports yep. go. I mean, it's, it's this thick. Yeah. And I have it sitting right over here. Um, virtually nobody does anything uh, that's that's four or five pages long, and, and um, I, I think it's great that we that we list everything. I think it's really valuable. Yeah, they're very useful in research too. So we have the annual reports that go way back in the eighteen hundreds. So awesome. Um, move on to the town archive. I sent out our our amend amended policy and sent a copy off uh, to Laura and Amelia and asked them to add it to our rules and regulations. Right. So that's, but you know, we can. You mean Amanda. Uh, I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've got you listed first in my brain and that's, when I think of the archive, I don't know. <laughs> Got it right in the email, at least. <laughs> <laughs> no. Better, better to get it right when you're face to face, Pino. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's great. All right. Um, I have one new business thing to talk about. I'm ready to move on. Um, so, uh, Chris Navarro, who's a Realtor. Realtor. Yeah, I don't know if everyone's seen his original note, but he's got some photographs of some doctors, early Reading Town doctors, a couple. Of, I'm waiting to hear back about the books. He just said some books. So, mm -hmm. you know, is that like two dozen or like two or three? And what were they? And he said he'd get back to me about a little, a couple, a little more specifics about the books. And he has a doctor's bag. And I did talk to um, Everett, and he thought the Antiquarian Society would be interested in it. So I suggested to him, I'll try to get the items from Mr. Navarro, and then we could, I could show the, like, show them at the next meeting, and we could vote on whether or not it's something we want to put in our collection, and Everett would do the same with the doctor's bag. Um, so I'm just waiting to hear back from that. Uh, Mr. Navarro about Virginia? Well, I noticed that the house has a sign on it that it's sold. So probably it would be good to follow up. I will follow up again soon. Yeah, maybe give him a call. But yeah. I, I sent him another note saying, if it's easier for us to just kind of come get the yeah. things and we can re return or, or otherwise right. deal with whatever you don't want back. Um, so I'm hoping we'll we'll get those things soon. I notice he's selling a house on, um, up on Pearl Street, so oh. <laughs> maybe I can get him to swing by and leave me. <laughs> stuff for me. It's a very strange house. It's 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 surrounded by yew bushes that are go all the way up to like they cover all the first floor windows and the front of the porch. It's mm -hmm. like there's a house growing out of a topiary. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I, I'm curious to see, the first thing I would do is cut all those use down so I could get light to the first floor, but I would be curious to see what happens to this place. Great. Uh, to review, oh, Virginia, any other I new had, business? Yeah, yeah, I had some new business. Um, as many of you know, I'm on the listserv from Mass Historical and um, Recently, I don't know whether anybody else saw it or not, but um, a man named Devin King has produced a, a survey of Massachusetts Municipal Historical Commissions um, and their websites, and Reading is on there. Um, and I'll just give you a few statistics because Reading came out well. So, yeah. um, 
they were, he, he did the whole, um, he surveyed 351 communities uh, in Massachusetts, and he actually worked with Chris Skelly from Mass Historical. And um, they rated them, they had four ratings. Um, there were um, hmm, none, which were 42. Were not. There were minimal um, information about the commissions. Um, of 103, there were adequate um, websites for 95, and there were 111 high ones, and Reading rated high. So um, I'll just read you what it said about the, our Reading website. Overview of commission, list of members, contact information for relevant city staff members with specific email link, and links to agendas through January 2021 provided. Resources linked include information pages on rules and regulations, historic properties list, demolition delay application page, historic house marker program information, link on HDC, and link to the minutes through November 2020. So we got a high rating and I'm very happy to pass on that good news. Awesome. Jonathan. Just to follow up on that, I did see that also, Virginia. I, I just was scrolling through. I thought I saved that report. It actually was extremely interesting. And it, it also included, uh, you know, what, what should be uh, on a website, you know, what's not necessary on a website. It was, yeah. it was really, it was really uh, illuminating to see. Yes. Um, I thought I saved it because it, it was a it was a it was a document that he it was a report yeah, that he and produced. then there's an Excel spreadsheet with all the, his research on it. So uh -huh. I just copied off the Reading one. And on that subject, Sam, another thing that you should add to your uh, to your list of things to do is um, when you speak to Amanda. Uh, have her talk to the IT people to list you as the chair. Uh, oh, is that not updated? Okay. No, I think I was still listed as the chair, if I remember correctly, um, and 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 the other officers as well. Um, Amanda as the secretary. I'm joking, Amelia. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what's her name as the treasurer? <laughs> Great. Uh, for the yeah, TV I, viewers, I, I, I do know everybody's name here, just for the record. I normally get a note back from Laura. Uh, saying posted when I yeah. said on the agenda and I didn't and I had a little panic earlier oh. yesterday or today but I looked on the website and found the agenda and it said when it was posted it was like Monday morning or so oh. um it's always a good place to confirm that like it's up there and it's been there since you know with enough time they, they do seem pretty good at keeping things up to date on the website yeah yeah uh, for good. all of the meetings you can Click on the calendar and see all the exciting Zoom meetings going on every night. <laughs> Is there any more new business? Okay. Shall we go over um, last month's minutes? With Amelia. <laughs> Well, I have that here. sounded evil, Jonathan. No. <laughs> um, so, um, Jonathan, you had a question on page two. Right. I did. What was it? I, I... Um, we, I was oh, talking yeah. about okay, the right. letter that we were going to send out to owners of the houses on the inventory. PD proposed putting the news in the letter that the RHC is planning to send out to the owners of all the houses on the inventory. Okay, I guess that means, so he, he was just proposing that we. Yeah, so. Proposed um, putting the news in the letter. What news? This new, the previous sentence. I can make it this news. The, the fact that we're adding business oh, uh, okay. buildings okay, to the I'm inventory. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. 
did people have other stuff besides what Jonathan flagged? I didn't catch anything else. And just, you know, for the record, I, I'm just putting in my thoughts here. I'm perfectly, if other people have different thoughts, <laughs> by all means, rip it to shreds. But I, these are just what, what oh, I- Oh, now, let's not go that far. <laughs> <laughs> no, I usually remember a lot of detail that I just went out of my, it's like, oh yeah. So it's good to have that extra level of clarity. <laughs> it's all those years in graduate school taking notes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, the detail. The detail is fantastic. Shall we vote on accepting the minutes as am, as amended? I'll be happy to make that motion if uh, right. you'd like. I'll second. And then, oh, I guess we need to do a roll, call, a roll call vote. Is everyone ready? Are you? A, mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, Virginia, I'm not voting. Oh, whoops, I just started on the side, you know. So yes, Charlie? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Amelia? Yes. And I vote yes. So that's minutes accepted. Yay. <laughs> All right. Excuse me, they are accepted as amended. As amended. as amended, yeah. Yep. All right. So we uh, will plan our next meeting and also look ahead uh, for the following month. Uh, calendar. Wednesdays are still good for people, General? Mm -hmm. Good for me. Uh, what about Charlene? She was having trouble with that. Some, like I have some, am I on mute? No, no, no. no you're good. Um, I have something on the third, but okay. that's it. All right, my calendar is being funky. It's stopping at the 13th of March, a little weird. Yeah, it is, yeah. And so there's the 10th, the 17th and the 24th. Okay. Uh, would the, well, the 10th is too soon. I, I don't think so because we need to help out the um, people. Linda, that's so tell. It's oh, so we tough. could, we could, yeah, we could make it the tenth of. Okay. Seventeenth is uh is a holiday, but more importantly, it's uh, Anna's birthday. By the way, happy birthday, Pino. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the nineteenth. Thank you. Yeah, me too. Me too. Anyway. Oh, good. <laughs> Be happy. We don't sing to you, Pino. Yeah. <laughs> Other things too. So it was this past. It was, it was on the nineteenth. Yeah, it's a big one for me. Uh -oh. I guess they're With a all zero big. at the end? At my age, they're all big. <laughs> Does it have a zero at the end, Jonathan? It has a zero at the end. Okay. We, don't, we don't need to discuss Those the end Those are big number. ones. <laughs> so the 10th? Yeah, look. Tenth is good. That's right. Yeah, let's do the 10th. And... Of course, that does mean, I, 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 know, I know you know this, but that does mean, Sam, obviously, five follow up with Linda, but just make sure that she gets us the stuff yeah, before that. Yeah, we can meet on the 10th and yeah, that would stink if she <laughs> Right. <laughs> uh, and then for April, wow, all right. April is the 7th, the 14th, the 21st, and the 28th. Which week is school vacation, anybody know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, not that it makes much difference because nobody's I going anywhere. Know. I don't know. The, four, the fourth is Easter. Is it after Easter? Oh, uh, it doesn't always coincide with Easter. Uh, Wait, I'm going to look. I can, oh, you're looking. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, just to go back, how um, to post the notice for the meeting, how, how far in advance does it have to be? Uh, 48 hours. Oh, that's it. Okay. For, for a regular meeting. For and then regular, we need okay. about, I think, a month's lead time to start the things for the, uh, the, the hearings. Hearing. Yeah. So vacation is the week of April 19th. Okay. So the 14th, maybe? Sounds good. That sounds good. It's about a, yep. Good. Yep. And 14th. somebody will clear that April date with the um, 
people that are the inventoried owners? Is that I'm be the happy year? to call. Uh, I'm, I'll hop, I'm happy to call Andy and uh, and Kurt. Let them know. All right. I don't know I, who the owner is. I can let Craig know. Okay. And then, uh... in fact, we could send them uh, a copy of the hearing notice. Do you think? Uh, well, we don't. We don't. I mean, uh, we don't know the hearing notice yet, right? No. Oh. oh, you mean just ask them if they're available for that date? Yeah, I just said to Andy, I, for me, I just said to Andy and Kurt that I would get back to them and let them know what date it was because I, you know, I was saying that are you guys okay with us doing the meeting in April? And then it occurred to me that I have no idea what particular date I was asking them <laughs> for. So I yeah. said to them, I'll just let them know what the date is to make sure they're okay. Yeah. But generally, they're okay, but. Yeah, and then we could send them the official hearing notice mm -hmm. when it when we've got it together. Right. Okay. Oh, with that. Right. So I'll call Andy and and Kurt and let Great. you uh, let you know, Sam. All right. I forget. Do we we vote on the ending the meeting? Yes. Yes. Okay. Would anyone like to make a motion to adjourn? I'm happy to do that. Who wants Sorry, to Shelly. I'll second. All right. And we'll vote uh, Pino? Yes. Shara? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Amelia? Yes. And I vote yes. Great. Okay. Right. Two meetings under my belt. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Awesome. Excellent. So, uh, yeah, it was. I've been running. So I think about the town archive. I've been a conservation company I work for part time. We do, they do a lot of insurance things. So when people have insurance on their artwork and something happens, you know, we'll go get it. And if it's works on paper, I'm usually in charge of that. We have to. You know, if it's wet or sooty, we all kind of deal with all that. And there's a a fellow who had oh many hundred, a couple hundred artworks. <laughs> and we I, I spent the day like making sure everything was sort of like in boxes ready to go because they're finally gonna be like leaving. And um, I was like, oh, I was walking, run, running around thinking. I need to do this to the town archive too. <laughs> Step away, make sure we know where it's all at. And right. So, uh, well, you know that raises that question with that email about uh, that somebody was asking. I think I forget from North Reading about uh, what kind of insurance does uh, do historical commissions have for their for their assets in the uh, in the archive? And yeah. it was a great question. Well, I think most don't. Uh, maybe on specific items, if it's sort of they know it's worth a certain amount, like maybe some paintings or some very rare letters or something. But a lot of those documents, you couldn't, it's hard to put a price on them, like right. in the market, you know, who wants to buy all of Redding's annual reports, you know? <laughs> They're priceless. They're, yeah, in, in, yeah, and to both senses, it's like, there's not, <laughs> so I think it's hard for insurance companies to like, decide you know yeah we'll cover that when you know if you can't prove it's worth something you know that but you know it made me think that you know i i mean all of that stuff if any of that stuff was you know destroyed or uh, or damaged it would be devastating but uh yeah. and just thinking about those photos i mean it just makes me think about the value of digitizing you know as much stuff as possible yeah. so at least you know it's yeah. it, it can be recreated somehow but and I have, I remember chatting with Laura and um, Amy from the library and I know they were both taking a lot of emergency preparedness training. And I know that Laura's got, you know, I think some key bits of the collection kind of on our list of things to save. So. But how could she find them? Well, I know. Well, or maybe just that room, you know. Yeah. She can direct the fire department. Just take everything from this room, kind of thing. Yeah, we should. I we should find out at some point what 
you know, more specifically, if there's some things we tell, you know, we want her then to like, just get first. That's usually kind of the most you can do. You mean it's you get first when they, when they get to our list of stuff, which is probably not. Yeah, after all, all the people have been saved, can you go back <laughs> and grab? You know. it's usually it's usually water damage that's the worst thing yeah. for the archival materials so. it's all, it's all, like, yeah. all right thanks everybody all right okay, everybody. Thanks. Good night. Good 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 night. Good night. Good night. Bye. see you see y'all on the growing and, and whatnot.